and welcome to the Adaptive Technology for Note Taking and Organization Workshop. If you aren't familiar with what adaptive technology is, adaptive technology are tools that can be hardware or software that help create a more equal access to physical and online environments. Adaptive technology can be a tool that helps you feel more independent, be more productive, and participate in class more. Today we're going to talk about, obviously, adaptive technology for note taking and organization. Um, so if you wanted to find out more information about the tools that we talk about today, as well as see maybe some more options that might work for you, you might want to check out our DRC webpage that is dedicated to adaptive technology. So now I'll show you how to find that webpage. So here is our DRC homepage. When you are on this uh, on our website, you'll want to navigate to the accommodations drop down menu. When I select that here, we can see all the different accommodations and you will want to navigate to the adaptive technology link. When I select this, here's some informa information in general about adaptive technology. Um, here we have a few different links that go to our different web pages for the different kinds of adaptive technology. So as you can see, there's adaptive technology for reading and writing, note taking and organization, communication and math. You can also access these from once again going to the accommodations drop down menu and then clicking on one of these items. So I am going to select the AT for note taking and organization web page because that's what we'll be talking about today. And you'll see as I scroll, there are lots of different options. Um, today we're going to talk about three specific note taking um, technologies and then we'll touch briefly, briefly on organizational tools as well. Um, and you'll, because there are so many different options on here, there's um, a big range of adaptive technology tools. Um, on one end, there are open source free uh, technologies that maybe don't have as many features. And on the other end, there are more expensive tools that might um, have a little bit more to them, more features, and can be kind of the gold standard of, um, of where they're at. So um, on this website, we have that full range, so free to the more expensive items. And the we try to um, what we list for the expensive, more expensive items that we mention in our workshops, we try to make those free to students who are registered with the DRC who have the appropriate accommodations. Um, if you're interested in any of the note taking technologies that we talk about today, um, you'll want to make sure that you have the audio recording accommodation as well as the adaptive technology for note taking accommodation. If you're not sure if you have these or if you know you don't and want to see if you're eligible, contact your, um, your access counselor and you can set up an appointment with them or contact and speak with them. Um, you also um, will need to be aware in some of classes there are confidentiality limitations um, so you might not be able to audio record in um, every moment of a certain class. If you have questions about those limitations you can talk to your uh, instructor for the class um, and also talk to your access counselor. Um, so today we're, like I mentioned, we're going to talk about three specific note taking um, technologies. And the first one right here is the LiveScribe Echo Smart Pen. Next, we'll talk about Audio Note 2. And then after that, we'll talk about Sonus and Audio Note Taker. So the first uh, adaptive technology item I wanted to introduce to you today is the LiveScribe Echo Smart Pen. Um, I also wanted to mention that a lot of the technologies we will go over today will also hopefully be helpful to you while if you are part participating in remote or online learning. So I'll make um, some comments about how you can adapt those to fit you. So this is the kit of the LiveScribe Echo Smart Pen. Um, the LiveScribe Echo Smart Pen is ideal or works well for students who like to take handwritten notes and like to have their hands occupied while they are um, in class. So this particular device um, works in 
that it has a camera that can capture your handwriting and also audio records at the same time. So it syncs your handwriting to an audio recording. Um, usually when you check out a smart pen, you would check it out from the DRC front desk. But as most of campus at this moment is participating in remote learning, um, at this point, you would check out your LiveScribe Echo Smart Pen from the PSU Circulation Desk at the library. Um, if you do decide that you do want to check out this device, um, just contact the DRC and let us know, and then we will send you the details about how to check out uh, this item from the PSU Library Circulation Desk. Um, so, like I mentioned, this is the kit. On the very front, you'll see the kit number. And when you open up the kit, um, there are four different things you'll find in here. Um, the first thing, of course, is the pen itself. Um, you'll also find a cable. So this cable can attach to your computer. And this part of the cable will connect right here at the top of the pen. Um, so this connects into your, into your computer so that the pen can charge. And it also allows you to transfer of recording information, the audio recordings into the desktop app that LiveScribe has that's called Echo Desktop. And the pen also, or excuse me, the kit also comes with some headphones. Um, you are free to use these if you want. They can plug into um, the pen so that you can listen to the playback without having it play out on the speaker that's right here. Um, you're also free to use your own headphones as well. Um, the fourth thing that is in the kit that I don't have here is an extra ink car cartridge. So I'll open up the pen right now. I'll take the cap off. This right here is an ink cartridge. So this can just pop in right here. So you'll have an extra one of these ink cartridges that'll probably be just tucked away right here. And with the ink cartridges, you have one that comes in the pen, one and then an extra one that will be in the kit. And then you'll also have um, one, if you end up using all of the ink in both of those cartridges, you can get an additional one through the DRC for free. Um, but if you need any more ink cartridges after the third, you'll need to purchase that on your own. All right, and then I also did want to mention when you check out the pen, you also will get a LiveScribe notebook. So this notebook has special paper in it that has micro dots. So like I mentioned how the pen can sync your handwriting to the audio recording, it used the micro dots on the paper to be able to do that. So you'll get one large notebook along with everything else in the kit. Um, if you do end up needing extra paper, um, if you run out of everything in the notebook, you can purchase an additional notebook from Amazon or sometimes they have them available in the uh, PSU bookstore for purchase as well. Um, they also on the on the Echo desktop, which is the um, desktop app for the LiveScribe Smart Pen, um, you can print paper as well, but you'll need to have a high quality printer. Um, if you do decide to buy another notebook, it's um, best if you can purchase a notebook that has a different number on it. So as you can see, this specific notebook is notebook five. So if I were to purchase another notebook, I would go for one through four or a six through eight, um, any of those numbers. The reason being, when you sync your notes, your pen into the desktop application, um, if there's two, um, if there's a notebook that has two of the same number, the notes can get a little mixed up because the pattern in the notebook of the micro dots in the notebook paper is the same. So it's not the end of the world if you do get the same number, just um, it's best if you don't. Great. So first thing first, when you get your pen and your notebook, you'll want to turn on your pen just by hitting the power button right here. And that will turn on the pen. And you'll see here it says the pen number. And now it shows me the time and 
the battery. So I'm gonna pop off this cap right here. And then because this notebook has already been open, the seal is broken. But when you get your brand new notebook, this will be sealed shut. Um, and then it says right here, tap here before use. So let me focus the camera here. So when you um, turn on your pen, you're just gonna tap with the tip of your pen right here in the middle to sync your pen to the notebook. And that will allow you to get a digital version of your notes in the desktop application. Once you've done that, you'll wanna open up the notebook into the inside of the cover. And here there are all sorts of different um, controls that you can use. Um, here's the calculator up at the top, but the main thing you wanna pay attention to are the settings. So first you want to set the display orientation. So if you're right-handed or left-handed, that will determine which one you pick. I'm right-handed, so I'm just gonna take the tip of my pen and touch where it says right, that icon. And now it says your display is set to right-handed. Then after that, you'll want to set the date and the time. So today's date is September 28th, 2020. So I'm going to touch the set date icon. Set date. And then it'll see, see here, it asks for the month, the day, and the year. So I'll select 09 to 8 20. And then it sets the date for me and it tells me even that it's a Monday. So you'll also want to do that with the time as well. Uh, there's other options on here as well that you can look at um, that are pretty neat. Um, over here on the bottom left, this is also a, this also appears on every page. This is a navigation tool that allows you to access the menu on your pen. So if I um, touch it, the up arrow on it, tells me it's on the main menu. And then I can scroll through the different items just by clicking around on the arrows. So if I touch down, it has applications. All sorts of different options. So that's pretty neat. Just wanted to mention that. All right, so that is all of the introduction of the LiveScribe Echo Smart Pen. So now I'd like to um, show you what the pages look like in this notebook. So open this up to a blank page. So you'll see at the bottom of this page, there are different controls. Here we go um, on each page. So the main ones you'll want to pay attention to are the record, pause, and stop button. Um, the other ones, all of these ones, are helpful for playback. So um, I'll go ahead and show a demonstration for you now. Let's pretend that we are in a lecture, and our lecture is called Dog Breeds 101. So I'm going to write my title up here. There we go. And then when I want to start, so that's my title. When I want to start recording, I'm going to touch the tip of my pen to this record button here. And when it starts recording, it'll say REC and it will have a timer that's counting up the seconds. So now I know that it's recording, so I'll go ahead and start taking my notes. So in our Dog Breeds 101 class, the professor says today that they're going to teach us about big and small breeds of dogs. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my first bullet point here that we are gonna talk about big dogs. And the professor starts listing off a whole bunch of different big dogs and some facts about them. So the professor says, oh yeah, there's golden retrievers. Golden retrievers are well known as family dogs and they're just this beautiful golden color. And the professor then starts to talk about labs and how there's yellow labs and chocolate labs and black labs um, and how there's also German shepherds and well, who can forget about Great Danes? Those are very big dogs. Um, and there's also pit bulls. And then the professor, before I can finish writing my notes, moves on and talks about small dogs. So now I'm gonna write my bullet point on small dogs. 
and the professor mentions, oh yeah, there's dachshunds and there's corgis. Um, some other small dogs include terriers and there's chihuahuas, um, all sorts of small dogs. And I'm trying to remember how to spell chihuahua if it has an H or a W. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it like that and I'll figure it out later. Um, and then after the professor is done with the lecture and we're going to take a break before the professor gives us some more information, I can hit this pause button right here at the bottom. And then it will pause this for me and you can see it has an icon that has a pause icon on there. Um, so that means that the recording for the audio is paused. And just going to focus this again. And when it's paused, that means that you're going to have one long audio recording for your class as opposed to if you hit the stop button that will stop the audio recording and so you would have if you have breaks in class, you might have multiple recordings for one class. So depending on what works for you and what you prefer, you can make your decision on that. So I still have it on pause and let's say we're coming back from break now. I'm now going to touch the record button again and I can see that it has started recording again. So the professor is now talking about a paper that is gonna be due in two weeks and that it needs to be at least, sorry, I turned that. So it needs to be at least five pages long and it needs to be double spaced with one inch margins, Times New Roman, and you need to have um, six references and the it's an APA format and the topic is to compare and contrast one big dog and one small dog. Um, and then now that we're all done with the lecture, I'm going to touch the stop button here at the bottom. And now it stopped. So now I can see that the lecture that we had was two minutes and 37 seconds. So um, when you look at the notes that I took based on all the information we talked about, there's definitely some information I missed. But because I have the audio recording that I got with the pen, I don't have to stress out 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 as much about it because um, I can go back and listen to what I missed. And the neat thing that is the greatest feature of the Smart Pen, in my opinion, is that after recording and stopping, you can go back and take the tip of your pen and touch anywhere on your notes and it will play back whatever was being audio recorded at that point in time. So let's go back to when we were talking about labs and the different kinds of labs because I missed that. So I can click right here at the end of Retriever. So I could hear there, oh yeah, there was yellow, black, and chocolate labs. So then I can go back in and write that um, next to labs. And then for the paper, I know I missed the some of the formatting on that. So I can go back here and touch. So even though I missed some things, I can go back in and write those after by listening to the audio recording I had. This pen also works if you wanted to do um, like things for math or things that require drawing. So if you were to draw some figure that the professor had on the board or the instructor had on the board. Um, so I'll show you um, an example of what you could do if you had math and you were doing a graph. So I'll touch the record button to start. And let's say we're drawing a graph and the professor says, oh yeah, so first we'll draw the Y axis and this is the X axis. And then the professor mentions that there are two coordinates and that this is coordinate one, this is coordinate two, and that there's a line that goes and connects them. And the professor mentions to figure out the slope of that or to figure out um, what the Y intercept is, we can use the equation y equals mx plus b. And let's say, for example, I didn't get one of these coordinates. Um, and I also didn't write down that one was the x and the y 
y axis. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the stop button now. So I can go back and click anywhere where I was drawing and it will play back what was being recorded. And then if the professor had mentioned what those specific coordinates were, then I could go back in and write those after. I wanted to also mention some of the other controls that are at the bottom of this notebook. So um, for playback, um, here at the bottom, there's this jump to position option. So I can see that this last recording I did was 53 seconds. So if I touch the halfway point along this bar, it'll play back at right at the middle of that audio recording, which was about 26 seconds. I can also jump forward or back 10 seconds by using this option here. I can also speed up and slow down the playback speed by hitting by touching the plus or minus buttons and also control the volume. Um, another cool feature is this bookmark feature. So the bookmark feature is really great if you want to put a digital bookmark in your audio recording. So it allows you to jump from a specific point that you mark in your audio recording quickly. So this can be helpful if you just hear something important and you want to mark that, or you can also use it with slides um, if your professor uses PowerPoint or something similar. Um, so I'll show you an example for um, if your professor has slides, for example. So I'm going to start my recording here. Touch that. I see it's recording. And first thing, I'm going to touch this star that says bookmark. And you'll see this little star appears really quickly. And I'm going to write slide one and all my notes for slide one. And then let's say that the professor is going to move on to slide two now. So now I'll touch that bookmark button again. And I'll write slide two and all my notes that go along with slide two. And then the professor moves on to slide three. And then again, I'll touch the bookmark button and write slide three and all my notes along with that. OK, so now we're going to go back and listen to this. So I'm going to touch here at the beginning, or I can even just touch one of these right or left bookmark icons. So if I touch this, And I'll touch it again. Great. So as you can see, um, when I hit the bookmark button to the right, it ended up going from the different places that I bookmarked in my audio recording. So that is the basics on the LiveScribe Smart Pen. Um, if you do want to check it out, you can send us an email at adaptivetech at pdx.edu or contact the DRC and we can get that checked out to you. Um, I did want to mention if you do have online classes, um, you can use the Smart Pen to record the same way that you would as if you were in a lecture. You will just want to make sure that if you're recording based on your um, if you're recording from a video or some audio that you're playing back on your computer, you're going to want to make sure that you have the volume playing out loud on the speakers and turned up just so that the pen itself can capture the audio. Um, if you are taking notes in person, um, same idea, you'll want to be as close to the source of the uh, of the lecture as possible because the closer you are, the better quality audio you'll have. Um, I also wanted to show you the Echo Desktop app. That is the other portion of the LiveScribe Echo Smart Pen. So I'll show you what that desktop app looks like. And here you'll see um, this is a Windows version on a Windows device. If you have a Mac computer, it will look a little bit different. But if you have any questions about how it works or where things are located, please reach out to us and we can let you know. Um, so over here on the left, you'll see these are the different notebooks that I have synced to my smart pen. So if I click on one of those, this will list all the different notes that I've taken on that specific notebook. 
And if I double click on one, it'll make it larger and it will list um, or it will show those digital notes that I was taking. Um, so you'll see that the text is green. That means that it has an audio recording that's linked to that text that was written. Um, if it is black, that means that there is no audio recording linked to it. Now I'll go ahead and navigate to the audio tab. And here are all the different audio recordings that I have that are linked to that specific smart pen. So um, to delete information or to delete audio files off of the smart pen, you can do that from using that navigation, the cross that I showed you at the, that's on the inside of the notebook or on every single page. You can navigate through that to delete sessions um, or audio recordings off of the pen itself. Um, you can also delete all of the sessions off of your pen by using that. You can also delete sessions here in the Echo Desktop um, application. So you can do that just by clicking on one, right clicking, and then um, you would, this would be highlighted. So it'd say remove audio from smart pen. Um, if you choose to delete audio from the Echo Desktop um, and the smart pen, that recording will be deleted permanently. So don't do both of those unless you are okay losing that audio recording. Um, we recommend that you free up the memory on your Echo, um, on your smart pen um, every few weeks, um, just because it won't likely fill up really quickly depending on how much you're using it. Uh, but if the memory gets pretty full, then it can run a little slower and it might have glitches. So just clear it out every few weeks, either by um, transferring it, putting it here on your device, on your laptop or computer desktop, and then you can delete all of those extra audio recordings off of the pen itself. All right, so that is it for the Livescribe Echo Smart Pen. So now I would like to talk to you a little bit about Audio Note 2, um, which Audio Note 2, depending on how you use it, um, can also can be a great option for students who maybe want to be a little less engaged in their note taking, but still have an audio recording of um, what was happening in their class. So I'm going to show this to you on an iPad. So this is audio note and the way it works again, it's an audio recorder, but you can also take notes at the same time. So to start, I'm going to touch the red button up here at the top and that will start the audio recording. Um, there's different options that you can do for taking notes. Um, so right here where the capital T is, I'll touch that and that'll bring up the different kinds of notes we can take. So there's text mode, pen mode, highlight mode, and photo mode. So well, let's start out with the text mode first. And I can touch anywhere here on the paper and I can take a note. So I'll write this is a note. Um, and then that will pop up with a note for me. And if you look, it's pretty small, but over on the left, there is a timestamp that shows that at 26 seconds into the recording, that's when I wrote that note. Um, I did want to mention that this app is um, really great for people who want to take notes on a mobile device like a tablet or um, a phone. They also do have a computer app available as well. Um, so if you would rather type your notes, you have that option too. Um, this application is not free through the DRC. You would have to purchase this on your own, but you can look for it in the Google Play Store or in the App Store and it will um, appear and you can purchase that. Um, there is also a light option available for the application. So that'll let you record for a few minutes so you can try it out and see if you think it'll be a good fit for you before you purchase it. Um, so I showed you the text mode and now I'll show you the pen mode. So with the pen mode, I can control, I can change the color, I can make the um, pen bigger or smaller. And this is really great, like I mentioned, if you want to take notes that maybe aren't as involved. So what I could do is, let's say the professor is going to say something important. I can just make a check mark and then I'll know that the professor is about to say something important. Um, I could, and then every time the professor is going to say something important, I can do another check mark. 
And then um, you can also do stars or whatever symbol might work well for you. <clears throat> Another, excuse me, another great option is the photo mode. So I'll click on that, excuse me, I'll select that. And then I can touch anywhere on my screen. And it will ask me if I want to browse from my library and put something in from my camera roll or take a picture. So I'll just say that I wanna take a picture and then I'll lift this up and just take a picture of my desk here. And then here on the bottom right, I'll select use photo. And then I can move this photo anywhere I want within my notes and make it larger or smaller. And when I listen back to my audio and click on that item, it'll play back whatever was being said when I took the picture and inserted it. Um, so now I'm going to press the pause button up here at the top. And so the way that the pause button works is that you can then hit record again to continue your audio recording on the same note that you made. To listen back, you if you just touch things, it'll just highlight them. It won't actually play back unless you touch this button up here at the top, the play button. So I'm going okay. to touch that. So you'll notice when I was touching the check marks, it was playing back what I was saying at that point in time. So that's why it can be helpful to mark important things that you want to make sure you capture. Now I'll touch the photo that I took. Um, so this is a pretty handy tool, especially with the photo option. Um, if you're taking an online course, again, the same thing with the, the smart pen, make sure that you have um, the volume turned up and that you're playing the lecture back on speakers so that the application can capture whatever you're trying to um, audio record. Um, there are more options over here on the top right under the wrench icon. Um, there's a lot of different options you can look at as well. Um, a really nice option is the paper. You can choose the background paper you have, and you can also insert a PDF. So if you had um, a, an article or some other reading for a class that you wanted to um, take notes on while it's being discussed in class, um, this is an also link it to the audio recording. This is a really great option. Um, so that is it for the Audio Note 2 app. And now I wanted to talk to you about Sonus and Audio Note Taker. So Sonus and Audio Note Taker is a desktop software app. So it would be something you download onto your computer. And it's a really great option for students who want to have that audio recording. Um, and it has the option to take type notes or not, but it's optional. So this, can, this works great for a lot of different kinds of students and how they like to take their notes. So I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so this is Sonus and Audio Note Taker, uh, the home screen. When you are first here, there's a couple different options that you can look at. You can just start a blank project. You can import an audio, import slides. I'm going to pretend that the lecture that we're going to have is has slides. So this can be a PDF or PowerPoint slides that you can import. So I'll click on there. And Sonus and Audio Note Taker has some default um, PDFs and PowerPoints that come along with the software um, that are already installed. So I'm just going to select one of those that they have already. I'll do the PDF version. And you'll see over here on the left, it filled in all of those slides. And each slide has its own section. So I'm going to start an audio recording by touching up here on the far left. I'll go ahead and select that. And it will start recording the audio. And when you look at all of Sonus and Audio Note Taker, you'll notice that it is divided into three columns or sections. They call these panes. So on the far left is the images pane, in the middle is the text pane, and on the right is the audio pane. And here in the audio pane, you'll notice that it is splitting up the audio recording into visual chunks um, or sections. And this just shows you that 
um, based on the way that the professor or the person who is talking um, has their phrasing. So wherever there's a gap, that means that there was nothing being said at that time. So we're going to go ahead and let the recording go go for a little bit. Um, the way that you can um, move from section to section, let's say, for example, the professor is all done talking about this first slide. I can hit this section button up here at the top and it will move the audio down to the next section or this next slide. This is helpful um, so that you can keep the audio recording synced to whatever slide you're on. So when you need to go back and listen, you can be like, oh, I missed some things on slide two. You can go back and listen to that. In addition to hitting the section button, you can also just hit your enter button and it will move that audio down for you as well. You'll just need to make sure that you are clicked into the audio pane. Um, another great feature is if you do choose to take uh, written notes um, or typed notes, you just click into the text pane over here and I can write a note. This is a note. And when I am all done with the recording, it will show me when I started typing this and where it syncs up to the audio chunks over here on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the audio recording for now just by, by selecting the option up here on the left that said stop. And then I'll make sure I save because that is super important. So you'll save. And um, if you want, you can customize whatever this is called. So over here on the far right, I can hit the pen icon and I can change this name to, let's say, lecture one. And I can put in a topic and a speaker and the date. And all of that will fill um, when I save it. And then, um, so let's go ahead and listen back to the audio. So I'll click, I can click wherever I want on the audio to have it start. And then I'll select the play button up here and it will start recording the audio. And when you look at, all, so it had that playing for us. Um, to control the playback, you can speed it up or slow it down next to this stopwatch icon. So I can play it back a little faster or a little slower, depending on if I wanna get through the lecture a little bit quicker when I'm listening back to it again. Um, I can also use the audio cleanup feature. So there's noise cancellation and click reduction. Noise cancellation helps with the ambient noise. So if you have a fan going or there's white noise, it will get rid of that. Um, so I'll go ahead and select that. And then the click reduction gets rid of if you're typing on your device or if you are clicking with a mouse, it will get rid of that extra noise as well. So the audio cleanup feature is really nice because it can just make that audio a lot more crisp and clear and a better quality. So let's go ahead and listen to that audio again after using the cleanup feature. And it will start recording the audio. And when you look at Great, and then uh, you can also control the, sh the pitch of the voice as well. So you can make it higher or lower if that's something that you would prefer. So um, I mentioned to you that you can take text typed notes over here in the text pane. There's also another great um, note taking feature that um, audio note taker has as well. Um, so over here on the far right, there is um, these audio colors and section colors that you can utilize. Um, and these can be used while you're recording or after. So let's say, for example, while I'm listening, I'm like, oh, this part was really, really important. I can go ahead and mark that by clicking here. And I can also mark this part as well. And we can do different colors depending on um, whatever seems to fit what you're needing. And um, there's also the option to color entire sections as well. So let's say, for example, I missed a l like basically everything that was in this second slide. I can go ahead and select this review color for the whole section and it will highlight the entire thing so it stands out. I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to go back and review that because I was totally zoned out. Um, if for whatever reason the color, you, you don't like the colors, or if you would like to rename what these different colors mean, you can go under the edit color key option and edit, or you can even add a new color scheme. And then from here you can add and customize um, the options there. 
Um, also with the note taking, so that's where under the audio pane, some of the notes that you can take. Under the text pane, you can do the same thing. You can color code and change the fonts. Um, you also have the ability to take text from the images pane. Um, so everything you have in these slides here and you can transport, transport it from the images and it will appear in the text pane. So if instead of retyping everything that are on those slides, you can just automatically have it transport. So you can do that from the text pane or the images pane. You can do extract text all slides or just one slide. Um, and then over in the text pane, this is where you'll find that. So I'll go ahead and extract the text from all the slides and you'll see that now it has everything in this text pane for us, which is super handy. Then also I wanted to show you with the note that I took here, um, if I want to see where that pairs up with this, I can click up here at the top where this little chain link icon is. When I touch, when I select the chain link icon, now it shows me, oh, when I was typing, this is a note that syncs up to right here in the audio recording. All right. And then, so that are, that is the basics on recording and taking notes. Once you're all done taking your notes, you can then export the notes or extract them. So if you export, you can make a video with the audio recording and the slides. Um, you can also take the text and the slides and it'll make you can make something like a Word doc so you can review that. Um, we recommend reviewing your notes within Sonus and Audio Note Taker though, because that's what it was made for. Um, in regards to online learning, um, there's this really great option if you have a Windows computer when you're recording, you can uh, select this drop down arrow and you can record from the microphone and speakers of your device. So it'll record what is coming out of your device as well as what you're saying, or you can do it from the speakers only. So this will have a lot better quality of audio because it will be taking the output directly from your device as opposed to recording what is um, like that, I guess the echo of whatever your, your device is producing. If you have a Mac, unfortunately, Sonicent has not come out with that feature on Macs yet. So um, same thing with the, the pen and with audio note, just make sure that you have the volume on your device on your speakers and turned up. And you can use the audio cleanup feature to help create a better quality audio for when you're listening back. Another cool option is um, for online learning is this capture feature. So when you do that, um, you can take a screenshot of your screen. So if your professor is taking, um, if there's a video lecture and they're drawing something or if they show you a picture, but that's not something that you have access to in the slides, you can just take this, um, take a picture and you can drag that around and you'll just click the photo um, icon, the camera icon, and it will take um, a picture of that and it will insert it um, over here on the left. So then you can have that and then you can type in your notes. So that's a handy tool for online learning as well. Um, so I'll go ahead and stop sharing now. Um, so those are the basic tools for um, note taking. And Again, as I mentioned, if you're interested in any of those tools, please reach out to the DRC and we can get Sonicent checked out to you, um, which is available on a term by term basis, as well as the pen, which is available on a term by term, by term basis. Um, so now I'd like to talk to you about some different task management tools um, and scheduling tools for organization. So I'll show you my show you a Google Drive and um, so you can get an idea of how you can organize your files. Okay, so um, Google Drive, if you're not familiar with it, is a file sharing system and a file storage system. So um, you can import and upload files here in entire folders. Um, you can organize all your files here and it's in a cloud. So meaning that it's not taking storage space on your device, which can be helpful. And because it is on a cloud, you can access it from different devices without having everything limited just to one device. 
So if you wanted to um, organize things, I have things in this folder organized based on um, on term. So let's th this is um, how I have my classes organized in my Google Drive um, so that I can keep track of all the different notes I have and um, any slides. I keep it all in my Google Drive. So if I wanted to create a new folder, I would select this new button up here on the top left and then I could create a new folder or from here I can file upload files or folders and within the terms I have it organized so I have a folder for each class that I'm taking so if I wanted to make a new folder for a new class I could select that new icon make a new folder and I can call this class five I'll select create and then that will make a new folder for me. If I go under one of my classes from here, I can have all of the different um, things that are related to that class. So I can have notes that I've made from a Google Docs, um, a spreadsheet from Google Sheets, or a presentation like a slide set from Google Slides. Um, just so you know, you do not have to have Google um, Docs or Google Slides. Um, only within your your Google Drive, you can upload pictures, you can upload Microsoft Word documents, um, any kind of file is available for upload um, or storage within Google Drive. All right, so that is the are the basics on Google Drive. Now I'll show you for ta for task management um, a scheduling tool, which is Google um, Calendar. And by the way, all of the um, organizational tools I'll share with you today are Google related. Um, that's because we are a Google school, and so it's free. And you'll have your professors will probably send you um, information through Google as well. So that's the reason why we why we emphasize it so much in this workshop. So this is Google Calendar. Um, you can see my schedule on here. Um, so this is really helpful if you wanted to keep track of events um, or classes that you might have. Um, so from here, you can create events and then also share them with people and put in details. So let's say, for example, I wanted to create a, an event to remind me that I have a Math 101 class that's from 1 to 2 on Monday and Wednesdays. I can go ahead and select this create button up here on the far left or I can just click anywhere on my schedule and you'll see it's right now at 2 it's scheduling something for 2 30 that's because um, it's just a little after 2 and it is um, but I can change that time and date based on what I need. So I can add in a title, change the date and time, um, but I'm going to go ahead and select this more options option because it has a little bit more that I can add into it. So I'll go ahead and write here Math 101 and it starts today because today is the first day of fall term. And it started at 1, so I'll go ahead and select 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., which it did automatically. And then here under this drop down item that says does not repeat from here, this is where I can select if I would like an event to repeat. So I can do daily, weekly. I'm going to do custom because I have it on Mondays and Wednesdays and not just one day a week. So I'll have it repeat every one week, which means that it happens every week and it'll repeat on Mondays and Wednesdays. And I'll have it end at the very end of the term. So I'll have it end right here and I'll select done. And then if I'm taking an online course and I have synchronous meetings, so I have a Zoom link or a Google Hangouts link, I can just paste that into the description or the location option and that will make it easy. So every time I go back to look at my class, I can just click on it and find that link easily. You also have the option so you can get notifications about an event. So here I can um, either get an email or a pop-up notification for it can be weeks, days, hours, or minutes before that event is scheduled. And then over here on the right, you can add guests to that um, to that event so you can send out an invitation to them. So I'll go ahead and save this and I'm actually going to change the color to 
let's do green so it stands out a little bit more. And you'll see that I have my math class on Monday and Wednesday. And as I go through the weeks, it shows that class. Um, and then if I click on here, usually right here, it would show the, the details and location. So that would be easy to click on for a remote class that has online meetings. Um, and then you can also go back in and edit or delete events um, based on what you need. I'm going to go ahead and delete the event because I am not actually taking Math 101. So I'll go ahead and delete that. Um, and those, so that's the basics on Google Calendar. And now I'll show you Google Keep. Google Keep is a really great tool. Um, it's a virtual bulletin board and it allows you to kind of put on what looks like sticky notes. Um, so it's a really great tool to help you keep track of what you need to do. Um, and you also can share and have collaborators on specific notes that you write. So I'll go ahead and select here and I'll say that this is going to be a note on resources and I'll just make my resources note here. When I click close, it will pop up that note for me over here and I can change the color to it. Um, and then I can also add collaborators so I can type in someone's email and have them as a part of it. Um, I can pin it so it stays up at the top of my bulletin board. Um, there's also the option so you can make a list so I can add list items. Um, so this is helpful if maybe you have a project that you're doing with um, for a group project, you can have a whole long list of to do items and everyone can check off items as they do it so everyone can see where each other is at. Um, so that is the basics on Google Keep and all of the organizational tools that we'll go over today. Um, so thank you so much for attending the um, Adaptive Technology for Note-Taking and Organization workshop. If you have any questions about anything we talked about today or any adaptive technology questions, uh, please visit us during our drop-in hours from 12 to 2, Monday through Friday. Um, you can also schedule an appointment with us or you can email us at adaptivetech at pdx.edu. We'd be more than happy to help.